All right, so for this, you, you are talking geometric mean. So for this particular triangle that I have drawn up here, B is the geometric mean between X and Y. A is the geometric mean between X and Z. And C is the geometric mean between Y and Z, okay? So you have to look at what you have and what you can get from it. This is where most of you messed up on your quiz for me, okay? So for this particular one, I have this altitude, right? So this is going to be the geometric mean between these two pieces, those two pieces. So I would set this up 48 is the geometric mean between 64 and X, all right? And so to get that out of the root, I square both sides. So I am going to do square the left. 48 squared is 2304. Square the right. When I square square root, I get what's inside. And then I am going to divide both sides by that 64. So I'm going to take 64, both sides. So x here is 36. Special right triangles, all right? So what you want to remember for a special right triangle is we have two types of special right triangles. We have 45, 45, 90. 45, 45, 90. For this type of triangle, we have, don't get into right 90. The side length, the side length, hypotenuse is the side length times the square root of two. So if I have a side, multiply by the square root of two. If I have a hypotenuse, divide by the square root of two. That's what you do for 45, all right? The other kind that we have are 30, 60, 90. 30, 60, 90 here. All right, for 30, 60, 90, everything's based on the shortest side. So for the shortest side, my longer side is that times the square root of three. My hypotenuse is that times two. So if I have my short side, it's really easy. Multiply by the square root of three to get the long side, double it to get the hypotenuse. If I have the long side, divide by the square root of three to get the short side, all right? If I have the hypotenuse, divide by two to get the short side, all right? So that's what we're doing here. So let's look at this first one. First, determine what type of triangle you have. We have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Then determine which side you have. We have the long side. If I have the long side and I need the short side, because you need the short side to solve for all of them, then you divide by the square root of three. So I'm gonna take this number, five square root of two over four, and I'm gonna divide by the square root of three. I know that looks weird. Basically what you're doing, five square root of two, it's gonna go in the denominator. The square root of three is gonna go in the denominator, okay? So I'm dividing by the square root of three to get my short side or my y. I don't leave it like this. I'm gonna rationalize it. Square root of three, square root of three, right? So on the top, I have five square root of six. And on the bottom, I have four times three. Four times three. So I have five square root of six over 12. That is my short side here, my short side. I also need my hypotenuse, my hypotenuse. So if I have my short side and I need my hypotenuse, I am gonna take my short side and I am gonna multiply by two. Well, that puts it in the numerator. So those will cancel, one and 12 will cancel. So my hypotenuse here, my x, is gonna equal five square root of six over six. Twenty-three.
So for this one, I'm gonna look and see which what I have. What do I have on the bottom triangle? I have my hypotenuse, my hypotenuse. What type of triangle is my bottom triangle? It's a 45, 45, 90, all right? So if I have my hypotenuse, and I need my side, I am gonna take my hypotenuse divided by the square root of two. The square root of two. That will give me my side, because I really need this guy right here to solve the top triangle. I need my 45, 45, 90 side, okay? So again, I am going to rationalize this guy, square root of two, square root of two. That gives me 10, square root of six, over two. That reduces to five, square root of six. So I have solved for this side right here, five squared of six, all right? Now what type of triangle do I have, right? Um, I have a 30, 60, 90 triangle, 30, 60, 90 triangle. Now, which side of a 30, 60, 90 triangle do I have? Here's my 60, here's my right angle. This that I just solved for is the hypotenuse of my 30, 60, 90, and I am solving for the short side, all right? So if I have my hypotenuse of a 30, 60, 90, and I am solving for my short side, I will divide that by two. I cannot reduce it. I do not need to rationalize it. That is my answer for x. So the first one we're going to look at says, suppose a 35 foot tall building is casting a shadow. The angle of elevation from ground to the sun is 60 degrees. How long is the shadow? For all of these, these are right angle trigonometry for this one, unless you're, you've moved to sign the law of sines and all that. But this one, we actually have everything we need is a tall building with a shadow. That is a right triangle. The assumption is that our building is not leaning. That would be bad. All right. So right angle here, right angle trigonometry is what we're doing. All right, so our building, they give us how tall our building is. Our building is 35 feet tall. The angle of elevation from the ground up to the sun is right here. That's gonna be 60 degrees. How long is the shadow? This is what we don't know. How long is the shadow on the ground? All right, so if I were to label this triangle based on this 60 degree angle right here, this would be opposite and this would be adjacent. Which trig function deals with opposite and adjacent? Tangent. So the tangent of 60 should equal 35 over x. Anytime what you are solving for is on the bottom, you will divide. If what you're solving for is on the top for these, you will multiply. So I'm gonna say 35 divided by the tangent of 60, and you're gonna put that into your calculators. So when you put that into your calculators, round to the nearest tenth according to your instructions at the top, 20.2 feet is how long the shadow is. All right, we'll also look at 47. Kyle is at the end of a pier 30 feet above the ocean. His eye level is three feet above the pier. He is using binoculars to watch a whale surface. If the angle of depression to the whale is 20 degrees, how far is the whale from Kyle's binoculars? All right, so for this one, we have a couple things going on here. We have a pier. The pier is 30 feet, according to this, above the ocean. His eye level is another three feet above the pier. So we have the pier and then we have his eye level, his eye level here, and that is three feet, okay? And then we have a whale surfacing in the ocean. So the ocean is going to be this bottom piece here, right? This bottom piece here is the ocean. Here is the whale, all right? The whale is surfacing all right now <clears throat> angle of depression angle of depression is going to be this down okay so if i am looking at the um looking at straight out down to the whale my angle of depression is the one that is up here 
Angle of depression is 20 degrees. However, <clears throat> that is the same as the whale's angle of elevation to the person standing on the pier. So that means this is also 20 degrees, all right? It says, how far is the whale from his binoculars? Which side am I solving for if I am looking from binoculars to whale in distance? Hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. This is what I'm looking for. If it said, what is the horizontal distance from the pier to the whale, we would look for this base right here, right, horizontal distance. But just the straight distance from binoculars to whale is going to be the hypotenuse, all right? So that's what we're solving for. So this side right here is 33 feet. We have the angle. So looking from this angle, this would be opposite and hypotenuse. Which trig function deals with opposite and hypotenuse? Sine. So the sine of 20 degrees equals opposite 33 over hypotenuse, which we don't know. I am solving for something on the bottom, so I'm going to say 33 divided by the sine of 20. Again, make sure that you are in degrees, not radians. And rounding to the nearest tenth, you get 96.5. 96.5 feet is how far the whale is from his binoculars. For number 50, they have given us an angle and they have given us two sides. However, they have not given us the side opposite one of our angles. They want us to solve this triangle. This means I want every single angle and every single side. So when I'm done with this, I should have the measure of angle A, the measure of angle B, the measure of angle C, side A, side B, and side C. I'm going to go ahead and start by filling in what I know. Measure of angle B is 79.1, side A is 7.3, and side C is 12.1, all right? Because I don't have an angle and a side opposite, I cannot start with law of sines. So for these, you have to recall your law of sines. Sine A over A equals sine B over B equals sine C over C, law of sines, and law of cosines. C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2 a, B, cosine of C, all right? So you have to remember those two formulas. In this case, I want to solve for side B. I want to solve for side B first so that I will then have an angle and a side opposite. So because I want to solve for side B, I'm going to use the law of cosines with B. B squared equals A squared, 7.3 squared, plus c squared, 12.1 squared, minus 2 times a c cosine of b. And I can put all of that into my calculator and round to the nearest tenth. When I round to the nearest tenth here, I am going to get 12.9. Uh, 12.9. So, don't forget for this one, you do have to take the square root, right? You do have to take the square root. So if you got like 145 something, you didn't take the square root, okay? So when I solve for B, I am going to get 12.9. And so that solves B, 12.9. Now I have an angle and a side opposite. And so now that I have that, I can move on to my law of sines, so I can say, well, the sine of B, 79.1, over B, 12.9, should equal sine of A over A. All right? Sine of A over A. So I can, I can use cross multiplication here. With cross multiplication, I will get that the sine of A equals sine of 79.1 times 7.3 divided by 12.9. I am solving for A. So what type of trig function do I need to use? Remember, I need to use my inverse. Inverse, right? Because the inverses will cancel and I will just have A and that's what I'm solving for. So in your calculators, you can do all of this, watch your parentheses. 
So when you put all of that into your calculators, A is 33.8 degrees. So now I have all three of my sides. I have two of my angles. What's the last thing I'm going to do for sol solving for my third angle? Solving for my third angle. I have two out of three. What am I going to do? Yeah, I'm just going to say 180 minus the 33.8 plus the 79.1, right? That's going to be the easiest way to do that. And when you do that, you will get 67.1. And so now you have solved for the entire triangle. That is solving a triangle.